A Good Morning Britain investigation has found that banned snacks containing dangerous ingredients like the hundreds we've got right here in the studio, they are being sold on high streets across the UK. These were seized in those kind of shops. They may look like legitimate versions planned to be sold in the UK, but actually they should not be sold here. We accompanied a trading standards team as they carried out raids on local shops, seizing all of these banned imported products. And with this Christmas expected to be the worst year yet for banned snacks, customers are being warned to check the labels carefully as they may contain ingredients with links to serious health risks. Some of these ingredients are legal in other countries, so it's not the manufacturers at fault, it's the responsibility of importers to ensure products meet UK standards. So, we're joined now by Stephanie Young from Staffordshire Trading Standards and Lead Food Officer at Trading Standards, Dean Cook. Welcome to both of you. Right. right, Stephanie, what have we got here? And, you know, why are these... These are familiar names, but why are these particular products in the studio not supposed to be on sale? OK, so what we've got here is a selection of the goods we've taken from the market this year in Staffordshire. Mm -hmm. These products have been voluntarily surrendered by shops that we've been into. Um, we've gone in, we've identified we've got un unauthorised additives, things like EDTA in drink, uh, which isn't permitted, yellow six in a lot of the snacks, mineral oil in some of the sweets. So these unauthorised additives, we've got... Um, a, a reason for not having them because of the challenges they can put to, towards your health. Um, and as part of my role within Trading Standards, my team's role is to make sure that if we've got these unauthorised um, ingredients, we take them off the market. Mm. Dean, how are they getting in? Well, the thing is, they're being, they're being imported in by... Uh, we, I mean, we don't have a problem with, the, like, say, the manufacturers. A lot of them are being imported le legitimately. They have... Um, uh, where the importers are actually putting a UK compliant label on there and they're putting their address on the packaging. Now, what our, our message out to the consumers really is that uh, if you're looking at labels, looking at food and looking to buy food, particularly at Christmas mm. when we're buying sweets and, and, and confectionery and snacks and soft drinks, uh, to look at the, in, the actual address. If there's a UK address on the, on the label, then it shows that somebody somewhere is taking legal responsibility for the... Ah, for the, the and food. the ingredients of the, these foods are then compliant mm. with our standards? Well, then, then it's, it's closer that they're actually, they're actually checking... There are checks and, and, um, and balances and, and making sure See, that the, the, the food's correct and compliant. This is what I wanted to ask you about, because we said in the, um, in, in the film that people should check the, the labelling. In my mind, I think I have bought food products, drink products, which have had a, um, a made-in uh, label, which was, you know, overseas, or an address which is overseas. Are you saying there would always be a UK address on a product designed to be sold in the UK, even if it was manufactured abroad? Yeah, since... since always. Since January 2021, since we, uh, the, the UK left the EU, now it is a legal requirement for all food that is actually sold in this country to have a UK... Mm address so okay. uh, if it has a uk address does that mean it is going to be compliant or could it be that you have ingredients in there which were um you know not necessarily and that's part of the problem is that some sometimes it is um, but even with some of the labeling we've identified that where we've got an unauthorized ingredient like mineral oil the importer has not included that one ingredient on the label so, uh, you so know, if I read the label, how would I know? Yeah, so that, that's, the, that's the challenge, isn't it? That is the challenge, and the only way you but can look at it... But we said to people that we should check the label. Yeah, what, what absolutely. What can we check? I think, okay. I think if you start with the label, that's a good point, because you know you've got somebody in the UK yeah. you can go back to. If it is that they've deliberately or inadvertently omitted the unauthorised ingredient from that label, then we've got capability of taking enforcement action mm. as proportionate I against know. that business. But as a consumer, you wouldn't know. So I think the best thing you can do... I mean, you can see we've got a variety of brands here. Mm. And a lot of these, actually, we've got UK manufactured brands where those can be on the market. And that's what makes it con confusing, is, you know, we've got some really, really well-known names... Yes. ..where the products are already on the UK market legitimately. Yeah. But it's these, these 
typically American imports, and most of it's coming through from America. We are starting to see some other bits coming through from other countries now, which has given us concerns. Steph, the odd thing is a lot of the ingredients that you're talking about, which are not allowed here in the UK, are actually perfectly legal as an ingredient in America. In America. So what, what sort of things do you think we have a higher standard on that, you know, America clearly does, and they've got completely different standards. Yeah. But what are you particularly worried about? Because what effect would it have on us, our health and our kids' like, behaviour? OK, we, we adopt a precautionary principle in the UK and across Europe, to be fair. Um, and that precautionary principle is, is that if we've got anything that links to you being poorly, potentially, we're not going to include it in an, as, as an ingredient, as an additive. Yeah. So things like EDTA. EDTA on soft drinks, it's not permitted. It's linked to things like kidney failure. Um, mineral oil, um, again, not permitted. Um, and that, we see that in, in some, some of the, the sweets that we've mm -hmm. taken off the shelves. Again, cancer-causing. So bleach we're not flour. saying bleach flour, again. Yeah, we, we, Tartrazine. We... Um, we've also got carrageenan. Car car now, carrageenan is a really... What, that, that really does give me some concern, because this year we've identified we're starting to see an influx of these jelly-type sweets again coming onto the market. Right. And these are colourful, um, jelly-type, fruity-type things targeted for younger children. Mm -hmm. um, and Caragena is it, it's a product that's, that's used in lots and lots of uh, foods across the UK. Perfectly OK, but not in that type of product. And the reason being, it's a choking hazard. Right. So you give that to a young child... Right. They eat it, they swallow it, doesn't dissolve in the mouth, unfortunately. They're at risk then of, of obviously choking. So that and, sounds and like an immediate, immediate kind, of, kind of danger. Mm. Yeah. Um, a sweet your child could, um, could, could choke on. In general, if um, people go into the kind of shop you went into in Staffordshire and bought one of these products and ate them, I mean, are they at risk? So it's not going to hurt them immediately at all. And this is, this is what I say, we've got a precautionary principle within the UK. It's that build-up over time. You don't know the, the, the adverse effects it's going to mm. have. That's why we don't have these additives authorised. Yeah. In America, they tend to use a system of proof first, where you've got to prove that something's mm. poor, going to make you poorly before they necessarily look as to whether right. or not it can be right. authorised or well, not. Well, it sounds like you've worked hard yeah. at um, getting your hands on all of this stuff and getting it out yeah. of the shops. And thanks very much indeed for coming in and bringing it in with us and the message with you this morning. Don't be scared, but be aware. Yeah. I'd say and, so. And the, and, and the message is, you know, the, an easy check to make would be to look on the label and see whether it's got a UK address. Mm. Right. And, and if it hasn't, then it's very likely that somebody's not wanted to take legal responsibility. OK, that's Thank clear. You. Thank you, Steph Dean. Thanks very Thank much you. indeed. Thank you.